Oh, hey there. Happy 1.10 release day. Oops, sorry. On this special episode, I will review the highlight, in my opinion, of the recent release 1.10. The highlight covers improvement to the built-in test runner, structure clones supported in web workers, web storage API, and support for a remote import map. During this episode, I want to specifically look at the new test runner features and the web storage API. The first thing you might read about is configurable permissions. So imagine that you have a scenario where you want to test whether a permission was granted or not, but you don't necessarily want your test to be run multiple times with different sets of permission. So to get us started, I wrote two tests. The first one will fetch a resource. And so everything should go well, and this one should succeed. The second one has a permission override. So assuming that through the CLI, I gave the right permission. Here I'm going to say, actually, for net, I don't want the permission to be granted. So I can test here that this should throw an error. So here I'm just going to run it very quickly. So Dino test allow all unstable because the SR throw async uh, function right now is unstable and we'll filter down for the, touch, the fetch resource and the fetch resource permission overwrite and our file here. So I run this and you see that they both pass. All, even though permission were all granted, this one failed saying that the permission. So the second example is the permissions are granted. They, I specify that I want to only grant access to random user me. And so I'm going to query for the permission. Are those permission actually granted? And if you don't know about the, the runtime permission API, I have a video right here where you can uh, learn all about it. So this returns a promise and then we'll look at the state and say, is the state granted? And so we assert this and this test should pass. And here our second test is very similar, but the difference is the net permissions are not granted. And so I should get the prompt state. It's good to remember that if a permission is not granted, the state is going to be prompt. And so here we have our command denote test allow all will filter only the two permission query test and run this. And here we see that they both run as expected. So now I want to present this new feature, which we're going to call doc test. What's going to happen if here we have a function that I export and I also have the appropriate uh, test file here. But you'll notice that the documentation has an error. If we look at the interface, it says that my user has a name, an email, a login, and a UUID. But here I say in my documentation that get user is a user that has a full name. So when we're going to run our test, we're going to do Dino test allow all because here we have fetch and doc. The new flag is called doc. And now we're going to run all of our tests. And you'll notice that it's going to throw an error saying that full name does not exist on type users coming from this line here. We can go and fix it. Now, name, this one reflects our interface. And now we can run it again. And now our test passes. Another addition to the test sub command is the watch flag. So up until now, we had the watch flag that we could use on a lot of sub commands, but tests. What watch does is it will run the command once and then start watching the relevant files for changes. And when we change the file, it would rerun the command for us. So for this, we're going to bring back our command and add the watch flag and run this. Obviously, I'll run this and say that everything is okay. And now let's just go and add a new test and see. The watcher picked up the changes, restarted, rerun the test, and now we get the two result. That's going to make developing so much more fun. Speaking of watch, it's a perfect segue into a new addition to this release is that 
what used to be an unstable API, but now, so you don't have to add the unstable flag when you use watch. So for this last test feature that I want to cover, uh, here I have a file that's going to generate 10 tests with a large Fibonacci number. So this kind of, so this kind of calculation is usually pretty slow. Following this, I'll have this other test that has a timeout that goes from 10 millisecond to 100 millisecond. And this last test that is slow because it runs a while loop for about also 10 millisecond to 100 millisecond. So I'll bring back my terminal and run these tests and you'll see that it takes some time. So right now it took these tests about a second to run. So here we can introduce a new parallel testing feature. So to take advantage of parallel testing, we'll add the jobs flag. It takes as argument a number, the default being one. Here I'm going to add three because I have three different modules that are running. And now we see that our test went from almost 1200 to 660, almost 50% gain. So this is very interesting when you have a lot of tests that do a lot of computation. It's important to mention that it only works if your tests are in different modules. All of those Fibonacci's that run into the same file, the jobs flag is not going to affect really much. But with having our three files that are doing three different slow operations, here we have a tremendous improvement. So this feature I'm very excited about. It is the introduction of the web storage API. Here we have an example using local storage. What we're going to do is check if favorite color is part of our storage. And if it is, we'll just say your favorite color is color. And if it isn't, we're going to set favorite color from whatever the user replies. So let's run this very quickly. So here we're going to bring up our command is dino run. And here we have a flag location that takes a domain. And you can imagine it to be similar to when in a browser, the local storage is always based on the domain. So we need to specify domain. And this is going to be used to differentiate between local storage for website A, local storage for website B, or local storage for project A and local storage. For so we're going to run this, and now it's going to prompt us to tell them our favorite color. So we'll say blue and hit enter. And now the second time that we're going to run this command, you'll see that it remembered. This feature is going to be very useful if you're, for example, in need to store sessions for a moment without having to bring in Redis. Another use case could be that if you're writing a CLI and you want to store the user's preferences, you don't have to, for example, write a file to disk and then parse it later. You can just use the local storage. If you're ever in need to quickly clear the local storage for a given domain, you can do dino eval location, the same location that you used the first time and just pass local storage clear. If you're ever curious, the web storage API is implemented on SQLite. So along with the cache and other dependencies, you'll find a new directory called location data and a hash for the given domain. You'll see there's a file called local storage. You can run this into SQLite and you'll see there's only one table called data. And if I were to select everything from data, I would get the favorite color is blue. So, so the more you know. As always, I hope you learned something today and that you'll come back soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you can't afford it, consider sponsoring me or the Dino community. All of the links are in the description below, along with the IY repository. Okay, bye now.